right, so we're doing a stampable overlay today. We got our T1000 Butterfield stampable overlay bags. We got this is our mixing station all set up. We got a bucket we're using for mixing. We got Colomix's mixer here. Colomix. So we got our our mix, brand new mixer. We got a backup mixer just in case. We got the primer we're putting down. A spare bucket in case we want to drop down. We're gonna try mixing two bags at a time. Um, we got our smoother spreader here, and we got our gauge rake and stuff. That's where we're going in that room way in there. So we got our gauge rakes, our trials all set up and ready to go. So we're gonna be starting here in a minute, just getting the floor cleaned and prepped, put the primer down, and then we'll be ready to go. So the prep for the stampable overlay, we're just abrading the surface just a little bit, just scratching it up, give it some good grip. And the way we're doing that is just with a little hand grinder with a diamond wheel on it, hooked to a nice vacuum. So I just, it's gonna give it just a little bit of grip so it'll bond really, really good. Then we'll put the primer down right over this stuff right here. All right, so we got it all profiled all cleaned next step is the primer we'll brush the primer on let that dry and then we'll get ready to put the overlay on No, they'd be all right. So we got our primer down, it's dried. It's all ready to go. We're out here mixing the first batch. We're gonna do try two bags at a time. Get that mixed up. Get it spread out. We're shooting for around a quarter to three eighths inch thick. That's what we're gonna use our gauge rake for. So we got two gauge rakes, one to use by hand. You can see right there, we got it set for a quarter inch and then one with a handle. We got our magic trial for smoothing. We got our smoother here for smoothing. And then I got a pool trial just for doing corners and edges. So that's what we're gonna be using. So we're using Butterfield Colors Stampable Overlay, their T1000, and we're putting it down about a quarter to three sixteenths of an inch thick. That's what Luke's doing right there with a the gauge rake. So he'll rake it out, get it to the right depth, and then I'll come behind him and smooth everything out. Now we know that at a quarter three sixteenths, we're going to get about 20 to 25 square feet per bag, and we're mixing two bags at a time. So we're going to go about 40 to 50 square feet every time. Jesse and Darren, you know, dump a bucket for us. So it's not going to take us, the four of us, too, too long to get this space done. It's about 480 square feet we're covering. The key is just to go consistently, you know, not try to hurry. But you don't want to go too, too slow either because you want to be able to get this down, especially on a room like this, you want to be able to get this down before you got to start stamping it. Now we threw the stamps right there on them, that set of stairs. That was our only other access. We had the access from the garage, which is to the right where they're bringing the buckets in from. And then the stairs go into the house. Usually where you start putting the overlay down, like we're doing right here, is where you're going to start stamping. So, we, you know, you're going to want to make sure you've got access to that area. Otherwise, you, when you get back, it'll be too hard to stamp if you only have one access. You can see how good that stuff lays out really, really nice. The key is just keep moving. I'm, the smoother I'm using gets it pretty smooth. I don't have to be like crazy fussy. I just need to get them lines out and those grooves out left behind by the gauge rake. And then just leave it because you're going to stamp it. You're going to put texture on it anyway. So I just want to make sure it's somewhat smooth and, and looks halfway decent. And then the stamps will do the rest, really. 
We're both wearing spike shoes too because you got to walk in this stuff. So you're going to want to wear, if you're doing something like this on an area this large, you're going to want to wear some type of spike shoes, some golf shoes, some baseball cleats or something so you can walk right back in it. You can see I'm leaving some lines behind, so, but they're fairly smooth lines, but you'll stamp those right out. As long as you don't get it back on it too late, you know, those will come right out when you get ready to stamp. The stamps we got today are the 16 inch barn board. I don't remember if I showed you those or not, but it's a really cool looking stamp. We've done some stamp concrete already on this project in the breezeway over there. And it's a little different color. Now these stamps we're doing today are the same ones, but we're going to run them in a different direction. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to look pretty cool here at the end. I got the finished product coming up at the end, so make sure you hang out and wait for that and see what this room ends up looking like. They, they really did a really good job decorating this room. Those bags are 50 pound bags, so that's about 100 pounds worth of material they're carrying. <laughs> they're, those two, Darren and Jesse, are the ones doing the real work. Me and Luca just kind of kind of spreading the stuff out. I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I got a hand trial. I want to make sure I get all the edges good and tight up into the corners of the doors. I don't want to leave any open spaces left behind. Now we self leveled this floor. This was an old garage floor. You'll see at the end, I got a before picture. This was a really old garage floor. It was in really rough shape. So we came in with some self leveler, Sacrete's self leveler, and we, we put the self leveler down. If you want to check out that process, I'll have that video linked at the end of this one. And then uh, we got the floor nice and level, nice and smooth, and that gave us the, the nice canvas to go over with this. You can use this stampable overlay on any, really any type of concrete floor. You just, you know, you're going to want it to be pretty level. It'll go down, the stampable overlay will go from about an eighth of an inch to a half inch thick. So it will, it will cover a little bit of height. You could use it in a garage, you could use it in a breezeway, you could use it in a basement, in a house. This stuff's really, really durable. It's really rugged. Yeah, you can see all those lines. I'm, I'm going to get those all smoothed out. It, it doesn't take too long. I'm just letting that smoother just kind of glide over the surface. I'm not really putting any down pressure on it. And it's just doing all the smoothing for me. Well, that's what it looks like after we get it all laid down now. It's pretty warm in this room. It's in the 70s, so we're not going to have much time before we got to get back and stamp it. We had about 20 to 30 minutes we had to wait, and it's it's ready back here where we started. So we're spraying on. We're using some liquid release, and we put some powdered release in the liquid and mixed it in. Jesse and his wife wanted this to be kind of blackish looking. The, the stampable overlay itself was gray. And then they wanted like the black modeled effect. So they wanted a lot of black in this. That's why you see so much black coming out of that liquid release. But it, it looks really, really cool. We snapped, we actually had a chalk line run to get our first stamp down. So we knew, we knew it was parallel with the walls. That's how we started with that first black one. And then we're just going to work off that. We're going across the room. The room is actually quite wide. We we didn't quite have enough stamps to go completely across the whole room and then pick up a couple stamps behind the ones we already had laid to work off from. So we had to kind of juggle the stamps as we went across the room this way. Now we're also making sure that as we lay the stamps, you know, the the stampable overlay isn't too too soft in front of us. We don't want to we don't want to stamp it if it's too soft, but it it worked out it it worked out for us that it went pretty good. I would say the the stamping process from start to finish was probably about 40 45 minutes something like that. It wasn't it wasn't like really really fast, but it was just steady. 
what we're doing as we as we lay the stamps and pick up the stamps is we're making sure they're all locked together tight we're making sure that when we pick them up it's got good texture behind there we can touch it up we got a touch up mat right there that Darren has in his hand so we can touch up whatever we need to touch up with that and then we're just working our way across the room we got another L that we're going to go into over here to the right that made the stamping process a little tricky versus just doing a rectangle but all in all it wasn't too too bad because of the size of the room you know it wasn't it wasn't a crazy huge room so there I would I got that touch up mat now and what I'm doing is I'm getting right up against the wall with that so when we lay the rigid stamps up there we don't have to we don't have to curl the rigid stamps up the wall now we're gonna work our way all the way over to the left into that there's a little room over there kinda and then out the door there's just about enough room on there for three of us uh, really could have used probably four or five more stamps would have been great this is a set this is what they considered a set is right around 10 stamps yeah we're gonna finish that little piece out and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like to get this all cleaned up and sealed what we did was the next day we came in here and we washed this with soap and water just some Dawn detergent some water dumped it on scrubbed it in a little bit and then we we sucked it all up with a wet and dry vac and then we rinsed it a couple times with just clean water make sure we got up all the residue and sucked all that water up with a wet and dry vac and then we let it dry out for a day 24 hours and then we came back and we sprayed three coats of the the D1 decorative concrete sealer that we use on all our stamp concrete to give it a nice sealed look. I'll have the links to some of these products we use down in the description guys if you want to check them out if you're thinking of doing something like this and you just want to do a little research. So I'll have the, the overlay that we use the self leveler. I'll have the T1000 stampable overlay here that we, we used today. I'll have the sealer here so you can check all them out and figure out if maybe this is something you can do. All right, so we got our overlay all stamped. 16 inch barn board. Came out really, really good. So that's quarter to three eighths of an inch thick over a concrete floor. So if you're wondering how you can get stamped concrete in your house, already got concrete there this is how right here well, this is the finished floor this is about a couple weeks after we did this all cleaned all all sealed Jesse's got most of his uh, furniture back in there he's got the room pretty much finished off just waiting to finish off his pool table right there and you can see how really really nice the floor came out it's a really cool looking space. They got it decorated really well. That's a concrete countertop there. I'm gonna show you a before pitch. This is what it looked like before. So this, the concrete floor was in really rough shape. And then this is after. So it's like it transformed a whole new, new room here, made it a whole new space. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.